I'm excited that this guy isn't attached to a yarn skein anymore. That means there's just a few more steps to finishing this off and the pattern should be available soon. Oh, you can't tell what this is? Well, maybe after the tutorial, things will be a little more clear because I'm about to sew on the ears. I know sewing pieces together may not be your favorite thing to do when crocheting amigurumi, but sometimes it's necessary. I have a few tips for getting the perfect positioning when you're sewing pieces together. And one of those is to use a bent tip darning needle. It really helps you get between those stitches without having to maneuver and manipulate the work so much. Now that we got that out of the way, let's get crocheting. Wait, we're not crocheting, we're sewing today. Let's get this sewing out of the way. I'll be using two different needles in this tutorial, one with a bent tip and the other is the Susan Bates 5 inch long weaving needle. That's a mouthful. Before I do any sewing, I want to lay out the pieces in front of me so I know which one goes to the left and which one goes on the right. There's also a front and a back to these ears. You can see the top of the single crochet made in the last row when you're looking at the front side. The back doesn't have that same appearance. It's easy to miss those details, so laying these out in front of me before I get started is gonna help. I'll start by sewing on the right ear. The first thing I wanna do is figure out the position. There are two ways to look at this. The vertical plane, which is seeing where the top and the bottom should be. A horizontal plane, which is how much to the left or to the right of the head. I want the ear to be just off to the right, a little more towards the back of the head. So this is gonna give me a little more space for the eyes when I need to sew them on later. Then I want it to be a little bit more centered when I'm looking at that vertical plane. For this pattern, I'm putting the top tip of the ear near the 25th round of the head. The bottom tip of the ear should be near that fourth round. Here's how I sew the pieces together without using any pins. I'm gonna start by making what I call some anchors. The first one at the top of the head to attach the top tip of this ear. I start by inserting my needle into the head from left to the right, only the length of about a single crochet. After pulling that tight, I'll go into the ear through the top of the single crochet near the stitch our yarn tail was exiting when we first started. Then I'll pull everything snug and go through the top of the next single crochet on the ear, closer to the head. Now I can take my needle through the head, going from the top, and then maybe one row below my insertion point. Now that the tip of that ear is secure, I can check the position to confirm it's what I'm going for. I think it looks good. I'll make this a bit more secure by going back into the ear and then into the head. Like I'm making a tiny circle that goes around the ear and the head. Now instead of continuing to stitch down the ear from top to bottom, I'll tack down the bottom tip of the ear as well. This means I should avoid stitching the ear in a crooked line. For this, I'm switching over to my super long weaving needle because it makes getting through the head of the doll a whole lot easier. I want this needle to take the yarn tail through the head and close to where I want the bottom tip of the ear to be on the head. Now I can switch back over to my bent tip needle and create this anchor. I'll check the position just to confirm the yarn tail is exiting the head in the right spot and I think this needs to move down a few rows. It's gonna be too high. For this pattern, the bottom tip of the ear should be somewhere on the fourth round of the head. But as a crocheter of amigurumi, you always have the option to make this your own. Now that I have that yarn tail in a better spot, I can make this anchor. Before I really secure the bottom tip of this ear, I'm checking the position just to make sure this is where I really want it. And I think this looks good. So I'll make another pass to secure the tip of the ear and we'll be finished with this step. I want to pull the yarn tail snug as I sew these pieces together, but I'm also careful not to pull things too tight that it's gonna cinch up the stitches in the ear and the head. Mm -hmm. 
Now with the top and bottom tips of the ear anchored down, I can better sew the rest of the ear onto the head without it moving around too much. I don't want to worry about working around any sewing pins or knitting needles. I find those just get in my way and the piece moves around anyway as I remove the pins. I want to begin stitching this in place by making tiny circles into the head and then through the ear. When my needle is exiting the head, I want to take the yarn tail straight through the ear, going horizontally. When my needle is coming out of the front side of the ear, I want to line up my yarn tail with a round that is across from my needle and then exit the head just a round above that, kind of like a diagonal path. I hope you can see the distance through the head is only about the length and height of a single crochet. This is going to help me advance up the head gradually. I hope that makes sense. As you sew pieces together, make sure to pull your yarn tail snug, but remember not to pull it too tight or you could cinch up your work. It's important to take your time when sewing pieces together, and I usually check my work as I go, just to make sure that my position is still good and I didn't pull anything too tight. It's very easy to keep sewing and then you kind of lose your place and things shift on you and everything changes. Something I usually do to help me sew pieces together is to move the doll around as I go between the right stitches. That's a little difficult to do on camera right now because you probably won't see what I'm doing if I'm moving around too much. I'll let you see how I do the rest of this and if you want to skip ahead, here's the timestamp for the next step.
Once you get to the top of the ear, look for any large gaps where the ear isn't secured against the head. If a child is playing a little too rough with this guy, you don't want the ear to come apart. I also checked the position again and I think this is looking pretty good. You could stop here, but I want to make sure the ear is really secure. So I'm going to stitch the ear into the head again, but this time going down towards the bottom. I'm also going to take a slightly different path going into the head and then catching a bit of the ear before taking the yarn tail back into the head. I hope you can see that. I'm trying to make short stitches to get these pieces really close together. Sometimes you can bring your needle through a single crochet. You don't always have to go between them. I'll let you see how I do the rest of this. And if you want to skip ahead, here's the timestamp for the next step. Now that I've reached the bottom, I'll just make a small knot and then weave in the tail. I know most people just cut off that extra, but what am I going to do with that yarn scrap? It's better off staying inside this guy and it can act like stuffy. That shorter tail is the remains from when I started crocheting the ear. I'll just trim that off because it's too short to weave into the head. Now to sew on the second ear. I'm going to do the same thing I did with the first one. Make those anchors for both tips and then sew everything down in place. But I still need to figure out where those anchors should be. Since my yarn tail is coming off the bottom tip of the ear, I'll start with that one first. I know I attached the bottom tip of the first ear near the fourth round of the head, so I'll compare what I have to that other side. I like to try and make things symmetrical as much as possible. I think this is okay, so I'll stitch this in and make it a bit more secure. Now to get that yarn tail over to the top, I'll call in the help of my big needle. Here's where things can go wrong. You want to use the position of the top tip of the first ear as a guide and compare it to the position you need for the second ear. But remember to check this out in the two different planes I mentioned earlier, the horizontal and the vertical. Sometimes you can try following the same rounds and that's what I've done here. I'm stitching this in and then I'll double check what I have. I think this needs some adjusting. If I stitch this in as is, I won't get a nice vertical line from the top tip to the bottom tip of this ear. It looks like I'll need to move this top over just a little bit. This is why I like to check the position of the piece often. The tip of this second ear should be in line with the first one when I look down at the top of the head. Now that I got that top tip secured again, let me check this out. Oh yeah, that's much better. 
I can see the earlobes are aligned, and so are the ones at the very top. Not that there are earlobes at the top, just the top of the ears. The spacing between the ears and the trunk also look pretty even on both sides. I'm going to stitch this second ear in off camera since it's pretty much the same process I followed before. What a big difference some ears make, huh? Hopefully now you can tell it's an elephant. I hope the tips I provided in this tutorial will help you in your next amigurumi project when you need to sew pieces together. Sewing pieces together isn't always easy and it's not always very quick. I usually tend to rush through this process and I have to be very careful and slow myself down to get the right position. I'm pretty sure that's because I don't like sewing. In the next tutorial, we'll be sewing on the tusks and hopefully that makes them look even more like an elephant. That's gonna be it for now. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and come back for more. Thanks for watching.